Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island and today I'm going to be showing you how to make realistic terrain in Blender from Google Maps. So uh, basically what we're going to do is use an add-on called Blender GIS and this add-on basically takes Google Maps, OpenStreetMap, Bing, just anything like that and can turn it into a 3D mesh. So it's pretty cool. So first I'm going to tell you how to get it. So if we go to the GitHub page, this will be linked in the description below for Blender GIS. You go down here to clone or download. You just download the zip file and it'll download the zip file. And you don't have to open the zip file or anything, just leave it like it is. So now to install it, we need to be in Blender and go up here to edit and then preferences and then go to add-ons. And then once we're in add-ons, you'll see up here, it'll say install and then click install and then navigate to wherever Blender GIS is. So we can see... Uh, Blender GIS master right here install add-on and we can see that it is now in so make sure to enable it and once it's enabled uh, you can see we have a few options now most of the options uh, are fine except for right here cache folder this is basically where it's going to store all the temporary files that it needs to store so if I go ahead and uh, go up here uh, let's just Let's just go to my main drive and add a new folder, and I'm going to name it cache, and then accept, and then just open this and click accept. So that's my now uh, that's now my cache folder. Uh, just make sure to set this in a place where you have enough space and just wherever you really want it. Uh, so make sure it's saved. Uh, if you have auto save on, you really don't have to do this, but you can just save preferences like that. And now what we can do is we can see up here we have this GIS uh, add-on. So let's go ahead and delete our default cube. So once we have our default cube deleted, what we can do is go to GIS and then Web Geodata and Base Map. And we can use our source as pretty much anything. I'm just going to use Google, so we'll use Google Maps and the later is satellite. So we're just not using map and street data, we're using straight satellite imagery to get our location. And we can just click OK. And so I already have this location chosen, but if you don't, uh, you've just, you'll, you'll probably see something like this. Uh, this is... Google Maps. This is a one-to-one -one scale of Google Maps. You can zoom in infinitely. Um, well, not infinitely, but as much detail as satellite imagery can capture. And uh, be warned, uh, if you have a flat location, then it's pretty much just going to stay flat. So this works pretty good with like mountains and lots of um, verticality and stuff. So I have this mountain that... I found for no particular reason I just literally looked up on Google uh, mountains in the United States so uh, to type in a location if you have a pre-made location you can just hit G and then just type in whatever mountain or whatever you whatever location you want uh, this is Mount Whitney I'm gonna change the zoom level to about 15 and then click OK and you can see it takes me to this location uh, right here and so once you have your location zoomed in to where you want it, you can hit uh, your middle mouse button and then E, and then it'll put it on this plane. So right now it's flat because we don't have any elevation or height map data. So how do we get that? You might think that it might be a really hard thing. We might have to download a height map from like Google Maps or something, but no, it's built right into the add-on. So if we go into GIS again and then Web Geodata and get SRTM, this will get the height map from the location on Google Maps and turn it into a 3D object. So we can see now our mountain is 3D. So uh, we have this 3G, we have this 3D object now, and what we can do is we can change. If you want to, you can change the strength. I might change mine down to like 0.9 or so. So we have this now, um, and yeah. Uh, we have this now and if we want we can change I don't think we need to change that but we have our uh, we have our 3d object so if you also want what you can do is you can apply these modifiers and then select hit all or select all by hitting a on the keyboard and just extruding it down and then hitting SZ0 and that basically gives it a flat bottom. I kind of, I I forgot what to press there. Um, I was trying to press Control Z, 
but it's SZ0 to get that flat bottom so I'm just gonna undo that so you guys can see just hit tab and then make sure all these are selected by hitting A on your keyboard to unselect all hit double tap A but just hit A once to select all and then extrude it down and then SZ0 and then you have a flat bottom and now you have this uh, thing right here uh, so what we can do is we can just render it in like cycles or something GPU um, and we can see it rendered uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an HDRI from HDRI Haven so we can just go here um, HDRI's uh, outdoor and I don't know let's just get this one so what we can do is we can just download an HDR and see what that's saved to um, a main drive alright and then now we can open up this and go to environment texture and then just open up our HDRI wherever it's saved to so mine is like a abandoned tank farm right here and then what we can do is we can look at it with our HDRI and just have stuff like that uh, so that that's really cool um, also if you want to uh, what you can do is let me find where it is actually a uh, film and then change it to transparent and so that basically just removes the HDRI from the render so that way you can have this um, mountainscape right here without the HDRI being in the background so that's pretty cool um, hopefully you guys learned something from this video uh, like I said uh, it works way better when you have a lot of verticality like mountains and stuff and just things like that um, if you have a flat piece of terrain uh, most likely it's gonna stay flat in blender so uh, don't think that the displacement's not working or something that's what I found that's what I thought when I first started this but yeah it just depends on what kind of terrain you choose um, and this is really good for like backgrounds or if you want like a real life scene or something then you could use this uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you guys found this tutorial helpful. And my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.